Good morning guys and welcome to my first technical blog of 2020 and what I want to talk about today is effectively a low power mode for Apple's MacBook Pros. Now I have one of the 16 inch i9 units and it's a really powerful machine but when I'm doing quite intensive stuff it can really impact on the battery life. I'm talking about things like virtual machines or perhaps raw video editing, all that sort of good stuff. Now wouldn't it be cool if you could trade some of that performance in for better battery life? Well, fortunately, you can. And the way you do it is you disable something called Intel Turbo Boost technology for the processor. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, check the links in the description. It'll explain how it works. But essentially what it is is a way to increase the frequency on the processor cores and give you better performance. But of course, with that better performance, there's a higher power load, if there's more heat, the fans go up, all that sort of stuff, and it decreases your battery life. If you disable it, of course, you get better battery life. So firstly then, to have a look and see what I'm talking about, have a look at this. What we are looking at here is me flatlining the processors on the laptop. I'm doing it twice, once with Turbo Boost enabled and once with Turbo Boost disabled. Now I've left it running for about 15 minutes and what you need to be interested in really is the temperature, the fans and also the impact on battery life. So let's have a look at those. After leaving this running for a little while then we can have a look at the results. So firstly let's have a look with the Turbo Boost enabled, that's the one on the left. Now after leaving this running you can see that the battery life that's left is 59 minutes, the average frequency is around 3.8 gigahertz with the maximum being 4 which is what you'd expect for this machine. The average temperature as well was about 84 degrees throughout the whole process. Now one thing that's interesting is of course the fans were pretty high during that process. So I think they averaged about 5,200 RPM. Now if you look at it with Turbo Boost disabled, it's a completely different story. So if you look at the battery left for example, there's 2 hours 21 minutes left. The average frequency and the maximum frequency are the non-Turbo Boost specs of this processor which is a 2.3 gigahertz i9 and the other thing that's interesting of course is the temperature the temperature is lower and because of that the fans are a lot slower they've been averaging about 2200 rpm for the whole series of the test so obviously if noise is important to you that's pretty useful being able to f keep the fans quite low with the machine operating as well i think they're pretty interesting results it's pretty cool isn't it now to give you an idea i was in the office all day yesterday and i spent the whole day on battery and with a Windows 10 virtual machine running. Now I can't do that if I have the Turbo Boost option enabled. I run out of battery sort of typically early afternoon, but if it's disabled, it lasts all day. Now of course there are some impacts of it, and do I notice it? Yeah, I absolutely do. The machine is a little bit slower than with it enabled, which is what you'd expect. But like I say, it's a trade-off between that performance and better battery life. In terms of actually turning off that feature, fortunately there is an app out there and it makes it really easy to do. So let's go and have a look at that. So let's have a look at the app that I use for disabling and enabling Turbo Boost. It's this one here. There we go, Turbo Boost Switcher Pro. Now I'll, I'll put the link for this down below if you want to go and have a look at it. I think there's a free version as well. This is the Pro version. There's a couple of more options available in the configuration and it cost me about 10 US dollars, I believe. So let's have a quick look at the configuration options. So the most interesting one here, I think, is the fact that you can actually disable Turbo Boost at launch. I don't do that because I generally operate with Turbo Boost enabled. The other thing is you have an automatic mode which is quite interesting. So you can have it on by default but then you can set certain scenarios that will go and disable Turbo Boost for you. It's quite a useful app and I, I think it's probably one of the best implementations I've seen of this. There are a few other apps out there that do similar things. Let's go and have a look at the effect on this. So one thing we can do with the Intel Power Gadget is we can actually run some tests which actually flatline the processor. So let's do that. We'll do the all thread frequency test there. And what you should see here now is the processor utilization shoots up. You can see the maximum frequency there is four gigahertz with the average at 3.95. Now, of course, what goes with that is the rising in temperatures and also the power consumption, which we'll see at the top there. So what I'm gonna do is just stop that test there so I'm going to go up to my app, I'm going to right click on it and select Disable Turbo Boost. You can also do it with a keyboard as well. There you go. You should see the icon changes slightly just to show the line through it. So what we should have now is Turbo Boost disabled. So if we go into the Power Gadget again, I'm going to start that test, all thread frequency. 
And what we should see this time is that the maximum frequency we achieve is actually the rated clock speed of the processor, which is 2.3 gigahertz, which is what you can see there. Now, correspondingly, the temperatures don't rise as quickly, the fans don't ramp up as quickly, and also the power load, which is the bit that I'm really interested in, is far lower. So like I say, it's, it's a really great little app, it's really handy to use, and some of those automatic options are are quite configurable so you should be able to set it up exactly how you like it. I'm just going to disable it now or rather enable Turbo Boost. There we go and we should see the frequency there jump up to 4 gigahertz. It's pretty cool this. It's, it's a very useful little app and I found myself using it a lot. So I hope you found that vaguely useful. It's a mechanism I've been using for a little while. It's a great way just to trade some performance for better battery life and it just works. Now one thing I've been made aware of is I think the API for this has been grandfathered out or deprecated so the capability to do this might not be in the next version of Mac OS. Now wouldn't it be interesting if Apple themselves actually introduced a low power mode or something like that? I think that would be pretty cool but hey I guess we'll find out in the summer. Anyway until next time any questions leave them below I'll try and answer them. If not I'll see you in the next vlog.